Hi, everyone. Uh, so this is the first in what I think will be a series of four tutorials that uh, relate to uh, LARCH 251, Module 2, Assignment 1, Modeling Landscape Structures in SketchUp. So in order to keep these manageable, I think I'll just do one structure at a time, and I'll start with the gazebo that we covered in class today. And then I'll move on to the patio with the built-in bench, the walkway, curvilinear walkway with seat walls and planters, and then finally the deck. So hopefully uh, we'll keep these as concise as possible. I, I am going to uh, emphasize process, okay? So I know uh, these tutorials are helpful and you want to watch it. You can watch it and you can follow exactly what I do, but I really don't want you to just do exactly what you see here step by step um, without thinking about it because the process is really what's important. The next model you do for studio or somewhere else is going to be different. And if you can't apply these principles to that, it's not going to help you. So. Hopefully, I'll make some connections to what we covered in AutoCAD in terms of how the process works, but adding that third dimension to it. And uh, I will cover some of those concepts that just are really important, and you'll hear me emphasizing those. So please, please pay attention to that information because it's really, really important. Uh, we'll talk a lot about groups and components. That's one of those conceptual level things that you need to understand, as well as how to use them practically in SketchUp. That's really essential. Uh, uh, to modeling efficiently. And I think today in class, somebody was asking about why don't we use layers? Well, uh, I think I mentioned the introductory layer lecture that layers in SketchUp don't isolate geometry. So they don't help us keep things from connecting to other things, lines and surfaces from connecting to one another. And that's the most crucial part of the process of really effective modeling in SketchUp. If you do that, SketchUp works great. If you don't, it's not very fun to use and you'll have lots of problems as you start getting into complexity. So we need to think about that and later on we'll talk about layers maybe, well we'll talk about layers when we get into the third exercise in this sequence where we bring something from AutoCAD into SketchUp because we'll have layers that come from AutoCAD. And I use layers sometimes to take groups or components that I've already isolated by making them groups or components and collect them onto a layer so you can quickly turn them off and on. But really the outliner becomes the layer manager in SketchUp for all practical purposes since layers simply don't have, in AutoCAD they have a hide or show and they have freeze or thaw. SketchUp only has hide or show and as Professor Goldberg demonstrated, you can hide a layer do a select all and things still get selected. That's exactly the way SketchUp works. So we don't really want that in the three dimensional world. It just gets to be uh, too complicated and there's too many problems that can occur. So that's why we're not talking about layers now. Once we keep everything, we get everything organized into groups and components. If you wanna take all the trees and plants in uh, a model and put them on a layer so you can turn them off and on with one click, that's great. But you can actually do exactly the same thing with the outliner and it's just as easy. So uh, don't get hung up over the fact that we're not using layers in SketchUp. The, the groups and components are what organize things and just accept that as part of the conceptual framework that you have to work within. Uh, so the first thing I want to do here before we start working on the gazebo is go to the window menu and to model info. If you recall from class, we talked about units. So we're going to leave this in architectural precision. I'm going to set this down to the nearest half an inch and set this to 0.5 as well. So just to be sure, I'm gonna open that back up. I type 0.5, enter, it locked it in there. I think in class I tried to type this and it didn't take the first time. So double check it, make sure that you actually entered it. The reason why we're setting this down to the nearest half of an inch is because we're modeling some elements that get down to the framing level. And what that means is I come back here. For those of you who haven't built things or aren't familiar with this, I understand you haven't had materials class yet, but this is something you should start becoming aware of and get familiar with. So lumber in the U.S. comes in what's described as nominal lumber dimensions. So one by two, one by three, one by four, two by two, two by three, two by four. But the actual dimension of a two by four is one and a half by three and a half inches, but you don't go into Lowe's and ask them for, I need some eight foot one and a half by three and a half inch boards. You ask them for eight foot two by fours. That's the nominal dimension, makes it easy to refer to, <clears throat> but the reality is when you get that piece of lumber, this is the size it is. So I'm setting it down to a half an inch so I can actually model a one and a half inch by three and a half inch framing member. 
Now, if you really want to use the nominal dimension two by four, for this exercise, I'm perfectly fine with that. If that's easier for you, do it. You just have to be consistent because you can't make your a column for the gazebo, a post for the gazebo, three and a half inches by three and a half inches or five and a half by five and a half and then use a nominal dimension for the for the railing that doesn't match it. But anyway, I just want to explain that that's in, in <clears throat> the lumber market in the U.S., Lumber is described by nominal dimensions, but the actual dimensions are smaller. And these days, some of the lumber you get is actually even smaller than this. They keep shrinking it down because they get more boards out of the same number of trees and they make more money that way. So anyway, just be aware that's something you'll learn in the materials class when you start doing actual details and dimensioning. But that's why that's set down. And as I go through this, I'll talk about the basic dimensions of some of these elements, but uh, again, I'm not worried about the absolute dimensions as long as they're in the right range of what we're talking about. If we're going to use something like a two by four, if you decide you want to use two by sixes for the back of your bench, that's okay. Just be consistent with it. Okay, so you don't have to do this exactly the same way. All right, let's go back to SketchUp. Okay, so I've set my units and we're going to focus on this gazebo. So uh, as we start in class, the first thing I'm going to do, here's the basic framework. I'm going to click on a uh, me measuring tool, a little tape measure. That's 12 feet, 12 feet. Okay, if we're going to use uh, the polar array to copy things and keep everything centered, it has to be square. The method I'm going to show you doesn't work if it's not a square shape because it's not symmetrical on each side. Now, you could do part of it. You'd have to do two operations, one for the long side, one for the short side, but just be aware this is 12 feet by 12 feet exactly. So since this is all attached into the same geometry, in other words, if I triple click on this, <coughs> I'm going to select everything because it's all connected. And since I have separate structures that I want to be able to select, edit, move around, I don't really want that to be all connected. So I'm going to start by double clicking to select the surface, the face, and the edges. Right click, and in this case, I'm going to choose Make Group. Now, groups and components are very similar, but there's one significant difference. They both isolate geometry. They both keep everything inside the group or component, will not connect to anything outside of it. They both can have hierarchy. You can have groups inside of groups inside of groups inside of groups, and you can have components inside of components inside of components. They both have hierarchy. They both isolate geometry. The main difference is that a component is like a block in AutoCAD. It not only isolates a group of geometry, but it defines it as an entity that when you copy it or you place it in a model, it doesn't have to actually mathematically, internally, it doesn't reproduce all that geometry. It has a definition of the original and then every copy that you make, it just has a location, a scaling factor, a rotation, and all the geometry refers back to the original. Now, what that means is if you put a hundred, if you create a tree as a component and you put a hundred trees in a model, the model size will be way smaller than if you make a tree as a group and you copy that group uh, throughout the model. Uh, it just, it saves geometry. I've tested that. I've experimented with it. It just, that's what it does. So you need to understand that difference. Also, the other super important difference is if you create a group and make 100 copies and you edit the original group, nothing happens to the other 99. They're not connected in any way. They just happen to be reproductions of the same group of geometry. Components, on the other hand, are like blocks. They allow universal editing. So when you edit a component, one of a hundred, the, the other 99 get edited the exact same way. Now you can scale a group or rotate it if you're outside the group and that won't change the original definition. However, if you open a group up and change anything inside, I mean a component up, excuse me, if you open a component and change anything inside of it, it will affect all instances or copies of that component. <clears throat> And then, of course, like blocks, components allow you to transfer things between one SketchUp model and another. So if you make a nice table and chair set, you can use it in every model that you create. And later on, we'll show you how to import components and use the component browser. For now, we're just going to define them and use them to model with really efficient geometry. Okay? 
Groups are collections of geometry that don't have any brains. Components are collections of geometry that are smart and they allow universal editing and reduce the, the geometry overhead in a model. So you'll see me use both of those in here. In this case, I'm not going to make the gazebo a component because I'm not reusing it anywhere. I'm going to make it a group, but we will use components inside this. So in order to edit a group or component, you have to not just select it, you either have to right click and choose edit group or double click on it. And when it opens, you'll see the rest of the model gray out and this little dashed bounding box here, which indicates that you're inside a group. So if you're trying to work on this and all you see is an outline, and you'll notice that if I single click on a group, I do get an outline, but I don't see the surface selected. Over here, this isn't group. When I click on it, I select the surface, but none of the bounding lines are selected. This tells me that this is just a surface as part of the default geometry. This is actually a group or component. I don't know which one it is, but I know it's been grouped together because when I click on the surface, I didn't select the surface. Okay, that's really important. You have to pay attention. You have to remember that and understand that. If you just think clicking here and clicking here are exactly the same thing, then you don't understand conceptually what's going on. And it's really important that you do because if you try and draw things while this is closed, it works one way. If you double click on it and draw things this way, it works a totally different way. So please understand the difference between those two things. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating the floor. And since the floor is going to be its own group, and I'm going to use the, a copy of that to create the roof. I'm going to double click on this to select everything, right click, and make this another group. Now again, I'm going to use a copy of this group to create the roof, so I'm not making it a component because if I did, the roof and the floor would be the same thing. And if I, as you'll see, I'm going to stretch the roof piece up to make a peak, it would stretch the floor up and make a peak, and I don't want my floor to have a roof on it. So I'm just going to use a group because I don't want it associated with the next copy. <coughs> so I'm going to choose, <coughs> well, I've just made a group. I'm going to double click and open that. And I'm going to just use my push pull tool to pull that up uh, six inches. Now, if you notice down here, it's reading out what it is. And I just did it real quick. It's four and a half inches. I can type six on the keyboard, enter, and it will reshuffle it. So until you perform another operation, SketchUp allows you to modify your input, which is a really nice feature about it. You don't have to make the decision right the first time. You can change it. Okay, so now I've made the roof, I mean the floor. That's all I'm going to do for right now. I'm going to click outside to close it. And now you can see I've got a group here. If I double click, I've got another group inside of it. Now, that's not too hard to comprehend when you're looking at this right now, but when it starts getting more complex, it really gets hard to remember what you did. And so the way we keep track of that is by using the outliner. So if you go to the window menu, choose outliner, you can see I'll pull it out here on the side so you can see it. <coughs> so now you can see this is the name of the file. In that file, I have a group, that's the gazebo, which will be the gazebo. But right now, it just says group. And then inside that, it looks exactly the same right now. You'll see how this will change. That's the floor. So I'm going to select the top one and call that. I'm going to choose rename and call that gazebo. And enter. And I'm going to click on the next one, right click, and call that floor. So right now, visually, you don't see the difference between these, but you'll start seeing in a second. So this is the top level of the hierarchy. We always want to use hierarchy in our groups and components. And that way we can organize, and this is how you would build a gazebo. You'd start by building the deck, you'd put the posts up, you build the roof on the posts, then you'd put the rails up, and then you put the pickets up in between the rails. That's It has to do with the construction process and the hierarchy of how you build things. So now, if I want to open the gazebo, I can just double click on it in the outliner and it just opened it up. You see the same outline here, everything's set up. So what I want to do now is when I click on this here on the floor or click on it here, it selects it. I want to make a copy of this and modify it to create the roof. So I'm going to use the move tool. I'll get the bottom and control, move it up 
And if I type, actually, if I want a full eight foot ceiling, I have to type eight foot six, right? Because I grabbed the bottom of it. So I'm going to do eight foot six. You can type eight feet. That's perfectly fine. And hit enter. So it just created a copy of that group. You can see it in the outliner. And it's called floor because it was a copy of the floor. I'm going to right click on that. Well, let's see. Yeah, make sure you have the same one. So it's the top one. Right click, rename. Well, actually, probably be, might be visually smarter to name it ceiling. I'm going to name it roof because it, this list is in alphabetical order. It's not in height order. So right now the roof looks like it's below the floor. Okay, so this is not a stacking order like in layers or in Photoshop. That doesn't work that way. It's a hierarchy of what's inside. Remember, we're working in 3D space, so there isn't a simple stacking order. Depends on how you look at this. If This may be above and below, but if you look at it upside down, it's the opposite. So the stacking order really doesn't matter. What matters is that we understand we have a gazebo, and inside the gazebo, there's a floor and there's a roof. So we're starting to create the hierarchy within this. But if I want to select the whole thing, I can just select the gazebo. Now, my roof doesn't look very good because it's flat. So I'm going to select the roof, actually double click here. That will open it, remember, or double click here. That opens the group. And that's the same function as selecting it, right clicking, and choosing edit group. Once you've isolated geometry, you have to, it's like putting something inside a box to work on. When, if you take a model or a drawing and you put it inside a box with a lid, if you want to work on that drawing, you've got to open the box up, take the lid off, get inside, and then work on the drawing. And that's how this works. You have to open a group up in order to work on it. And you can do it either by double clicking in the outliner, double clicking on the group, or selecting with one click and right clicking and choose edit group. So in order to create that peaked roof, now that I'm inside the group, I'm just drawing lines from corner to corner and it will automatically create these intersections. I'm going to get the Move tool, and a good shortcut to know if I've got the Move tool, for whatever reason, this surface remains selected. If I start moving, it's moving that surface, and that's not what I want, right? So I can just hit the Escape key. That will cancel out that selection and allow me to get just the point in the center, which I'm going to move up. Uh, again, my readout is saying three foot five, two and a half, three. I can. I can just move it or I can just let go and do three feet, enter, and there it is. Just make sure you have the blue axis activated <coughs> so it pulls it up in the vertical direction. All right, so that's how you create a roof. It just kind of pulled that up there and uh, created the peak on it. So now that I'm done with that, I can click outside this bounding box, and now I'm back inside the gazebo group itself. All right, now the next thing is, I put the roof up there because I can do it without having posts to hold it up, but eventually I need to have posts in there. So I'm going to create a post in the corner and then make copies of that post. And this is a case where since I am I need four posts to hold up my roof, I'm going to create that post as a component because that way when I copy it, it only has to remember the initial copy and the other ones will take up much less memory within my model. So the first thing I need to do, drawing it is easy. We're going to use the rectangle tool, make a square, make it a component, and extrude it to touch between the floor and the ceiling. Getting it in the right place is important, however, because if it's not perfectly centered on this, then the copies won't be perfectly centered when I rotate them around the center point. So before I start drawing anything, I'm going to take my little tape measure, and I'm going to pull off Align two inches there. So I'm just clicking, dragging, type, well, that two, enter, and there you go. So again, in perspective, looks like this is narrower, this is bigger, but if you spin it around, you can see they're both exactly the same. So pull it off, keyboard it in, you're done. Uh, the tape measure helps us check dimensions, but also allows us to create these guides. And these guidelines are like X lines in AutoCAD, they extend into infinity and beyond. So no matter where you zoom out to, they keep going. But they do help you. They provide additional snap points that you can use to align things without actually drawing a real line. All right, now that I've got that, I'm going to zoom in, snap right to that intersection. And I'm doing a, going to do a six by six post. So there's six and a half on the one dimension. 
and there's six and a half. And if I get to the right place, you'll see the square prompt pops up. And I get that little diagonal that says, yes, you've just drawn a square. Click, and that's it. So that's the footprint of my corner posts. Now, before I do anything else, double click, right click. And in this case, I'm going to make them a, a component. Again, I'm repeating this geometry. I only have one gazebo. It can be a group. But anytime you start repeating geometry, it makes sense to make it a component because it uses less memory. And it gives you universal editing, as you'll see in just a second. So I'm not even going to extrude it. I'm going to make it a component. Call this uh, gazebo post because I might have some other posts in my model. And really key thing is here is make sure you have replaced selection with component. If this is unchecked, it actually creates a component, puts it into the library, but this won't be a component. And then if you copy this, you won't be copying the component. You'll just be copying a random square that you drew in SketchUp. Okay, so you have to make sure that this says replace selection with component. Hit create. And to find out if you did your job, you can select it. Right click and choose Entity Info. And if you look up over here, it says it's on layer zero, definition gazebo post, and it's a component. Okay, so if you want to check it, right click and look at Entity Info. All right, now that I have that, I'm going to make copies of it, and then I'll extrude it so you can see the effect that using components has. So I'm going to, it's selected, click on it once. Again, I know some people in class, you're going to copy it or rotate it, copy. You're double clicking. You don't want to do that. When you do that, you enter the component itself, and then you're, all you're doing is duplicating geometry within the component, and it's not saving any memory. What you want to do is just click once to select it. Okay, don't double click, click once, select it. Choose Rotate, and I want to rotate it about the center point, so I'm going to find the midpoint. And this is, you just have to move along the side. And remember, this is a perspective, so the midpoint isn't going to be exactly halfway along this line because of the convergence in the perspective. It's going to be farther toward the far, it's going to be closer to the far end than the near end. So I'm just holding it there. Now I'm not clicking. I'm just picking it up, coming over here, picking up the midpoint there, and then I'm sliding into the center, and now you can see that it's actually picking up the inference from the red, from the center point from the red side, center point from the green side. Now I click right there. So that's my center of rotation exactly in the center of the square. Now, when I choose my reference point, I don't want to click on the shape itself, which is what we did in the demo on Tuesday, because I can't reference this point to anything. I don't, I mean, I guess I could go. I don't know how many degrees that is? Was that's 45, and that's, that's like 90 degrees. I could type in a degree mention, but I don't want to have to think about it, and I don't like doing math in my head. So what I can do up to to figure that out is simply click on this corner and say, okay, right there. Hold the control key down, make a copy. I want that copy to be lined up with this corner, and that means it's going to be exactly where it's supposed to be. So use the corner as a reference since you have the same point over here to click on. And now I can use my keyboard modifiers to do a, an array, in this case a polar array, by doing, I need a total of one, two, three copies. So I'm going to type 3x, enter, and now you can see it just put that. And if this is a square, if I line this up, they should all be exactly in the same location on every corner. Okay, so now I can open one of these components up get my push-pull tool, and because they're all based on the same, when I extrude one, it extrudes them all. Now, if you do this and you pull this up and nothing happens with the other three, that means you made it a group and not a component. So that's another advantage. It's universal editing. It allows me to modify one and modify everything else. Now, what that doesn't mean is that I can't modify these. So if I select that component and choose Scale, I can scale that component up and nothing happens to the rest of these because I'm not inside the component. I'm simply modifying or transforming an instance of that component. So when SketchUp sees this, it says, all right, put this component here and then scale it by this percentage from corner to corner. And that's how it determines the geometry. I'm going to undo that so it stays there where it's supposed to. But that's the difference. If I want to edit all of them, you have to open a component and actually edit the raw geometry. If you select an instance and move it or change it, it won't affect anything else. But if you do that inside the component, it will. If I come in here and triple click on this, get the move tool and move this over, it's going to move all the it's going to move them all over and they'll all be offset from the corner. 
So you see how that works? If it's inside, it will affect all of them. If it's outside, it sim simply affects that single instance of the component, whether it's the original or copies. OK, so we've got our floor, our roof, our post. Now the next thing is the railing in between. So again, what I want to do is come in here and first I'm going to use my little tape measure. And again, I'm not inside. I'm inside the, the gazebo, but I'm not inside any of these other groups. And actually, I'll talk about this. Well, let's do it right now. Let's say just to keep this simple, I could come in here and select all these posts. I just clicked on the top one, hold the shift key down, click on the bottom one, basic operating level stuff, and say make group. I click on that, rename, call that posts. Okay, so now I can close that up. I can select any one of those posts that are in this list, or I can select the whole group. So I don't really need that in terms of geometry separation, but it does make my list a lot cleaner, so I don't have to see. I had 100 of these. I don't have to look at them. I'll just fold it up, and I see the main level. Okay, so that's just a way to help organize it. Key is, though, again, I want to make sure I'm at the gazebo level. I'm going to use my tape measure, and this I'm going to make some horizontal rails to set up these. I'm going to pull off this to 6 inches above the floor. Okay, and then since... Uh, I know this is six and a half inches. I'm going to put a three and a half inch, um, well, yeah, one and a half inch tall, three and a half inch wide, two by four in there, nominally two by four to create that rail. So, you know, I could figure out, well, what's the difference between that, that, and, but because my snapping is set, what I'm going to do to make this easier, because I don't like doing math in my head, is I'm going to draw, start right here. And you can see down below, if you look in the left corner there, it says one and a half by three and a half inches. Okay? Lower left corner where it says dimensions. Boom. There you go. It's done. Now I'm going to double click on that, use my move tool, and just move that over. And I just moved it over like two steps, which is what the snapping, so that perfectly centered it in between there on that six by six. Okay, so I just started from the edge because it was easy. I made it the correct size, and then I moved it over. Now, next thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is double-click on it to select it, right-click, make this a component, and we'll call that uh, uh, not deck. We'll call that um, gazebo rail. So I won't call it railing. I'll just call it the rail. Replace selection with component, create. Okay, now I can come in here and I can use my little tape measure and say, all right, well, actually, I don't need a tape measure for this. I can just move it. So I'm going to use move, copy, control, move. And I'm going to move that up to two foot six inches. All right, now I'm just basing that on, that may not be per code these days. Maybe the railings have to be 40 inches tall. But that gives us a 30 inch high railing at the top. If you want to make it three feet, make it three feet. doesn't matter. Okay, so I just moved that up there. And because I made this a component, I can double-click on it, open it up, get my push-pull, and as you would expect, it's going to pull both of those because it's a copy of the original component. So I just pulled across and I made sure it snapped right to that edge. You don't want to pull it through, you want it snapped right to the edge so you're not overlapping the geometry. All right, now, now that I've got these two, they're components, but I really want a railing assembly at the end of the day. So I'm going to click on both of these, shift click to select them, right click, choose make component. Call this railing assembly. So now this is going to end up being one entity. When I click on it, I can select everything inside of there. And you can see right now there's two gazebo rails. And if I wanted to really organize this, you can take this as far as you want. You can make a group. Call that rails. And then when we start adding the, the pickets in, 
you'll see how that works. So I'm going to double click on this to open it up. And in order to center these, I'm going to go back to my trusty tape measure, pull off six inches there. And for copying purposes, I'm going to pull off six inches there. So I'm just watching the measurements read out and doing it manually. If you want to type six, enter, you can do that too. So now that I've got that done, I go back to my rectangle tool. I know that's the width. Just have to make it one and a half by three and a half. Again, I can see that down the window. I don't really have to type that in there. It's not, it doesn't take that long to get it. And since this is a group, you can see that those lines are thick because they don't connect into that. And that's exactly what I want. I don't want these connected to that rail. They're separate entities. When you build this, you put the rails in, then you cut the, the pickets, and you put the pickets in there and screw those into place. So I'm going to double click, right click, choose component, because I'm going to have a whole bunch of these. Call it rail picket. And then I'm going to double click on that. Zoom out a little bit, use the push-pull, snap it to there. All right, and then exit that component. And now I'm going to use the array, the move copy. So I'm going to click on that right there, hold the control key down. I've got my reference mark right here. If you have to zoom in to make sure you're getting it. And now I can experiment with how many I want in between. So I'll try 15 divide. And yeah, it doesn't look too bad. You don't want them too big because then little kids will fall through there. So that's 15. That gives me 15 total copies. I like that. So I'm going to click out here, click out here, click out here. And now I've got a railing assembly. And here's all my pickets over here in the outliner. So if I, and actually you can see what happened. These are still inside the rails. So I'll show you how you can use the outliner to help reorganize. So there's rail. Shift click. I'm going to make a group of those. Call that group pickets. And I'm going to close that up. And now I'm going to, well, I'm not sure how I lost that group. I'll select these two again. I'm not sure why that group disappeared. I guess because I added those other ones into it. So I'm going to make a group here. Rename. Rails. Okay, so, oh, I see what I did here. I've got these both under rails, which I don't really want. So, again, made a mistake. I really want the railing assembly with, so if I just slide that up to there, slide that up to there, now I've got the railing assembly, I've got the pickets. And the rails. Sorry, this one has to come out too. There we go. Okay, so railing assembly. All right, well, this isn't working very well, so I'm going to back up. Let's just undo that. I didn't do that very well. Let's back up there, I think. Okay, I just created that. So maybe what I need to do is just, instead of messing around with this, I need to explode this upper level, which is what I need to do. So now that's, that's what I needed to do. So by exploding the upper level, it just got rid of that extra group that wasn't really wasn't doing anything because what I wanted is, as soon as it get done auto saving, I wanted the railing assembly and it has pickets in it and it has rails in it. Those are the two pieces. Okay. Okay. So railing assembly, pickets, rails. Now again, this could all be just be inside of one railing assembly. It's not necessary to do this. I just wanted to show you how you can use these to keep things organized and collapse everything down. Also, you want to note in here, anything that's a solid square is a group. Anything that has these little Ford squares, that's a, a component. So you can see that's a component. 
And this is a group that contains all these, but what's in there are components. So um, anyway, that's how to kind of keep that organized. Now, now that we have this done, we can reuse this. So we're going to click on that assembly. And you can see also that we have these, these uh, lines are part of that group, and that's OK. We'll reproduce them. We'll turn those off later on. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the posts. I'm going to find the midpoint, find the midpoint, which those things are making my job a little more difficult. So hopefully that's the center point. I think it is. OK, so I found the center point. Again, I'm going to use the corner as a reference. Control, move, snap to this corner. And if it fits, I had the right point. Yeah, everything fits in there. And then I want a total of 3x. Enter, and it's going to place that in there. OK, I think that's as far as I got in class in terms of bringing that around. So because let's turn these guidelines off for right now. If I go to view and in geometry, actually what I want to do is uncheck hidden geometry. I want to go down to uncheck guides, and that just turns those off. So I've got the gazebo form. The railings are all around there. And now if I want to modify this so that there's an opening on this side and this side over here, the first thing I need to do is actually make this component unique. Because if I modify this one, it's going to modify all of them. And if you want openings on every side, that's great. But if you only want openings on two, side, two sides, it's not. So I'll probably just make this unique, modify it, and then copy it back to the other side because I only want to do this once. So to do that, you simply select that component, right click, and choose Make Unique. So it just made a new version. It looks the same, but it actually has a new identity now. So in order to edit this, I'm going to double click, open it up. And I'm going to pick, this looks like about the center post. So maybe I'll take this one. I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. Um, so I'm going to take this one, this one, and this one and delete them. Okay, so I've got that opening in there. Now I'm going to come outside of here. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to widen these to make them look like posts, pull it down to the deck, and then cut through this railing with it. So in order to do that, I need to make this one unique and make this one unique. Because if I change these, it, it will change everything in here, and I don't want that. So now that it's unique, I can open this up. I can do the push pull. Right now, this is an inch and a half. So if I take it out another inch and a half, so I'll take it out two and a half inches, it makes it look more, more like a post there. Okay, and then I'm going to come in here. And I really want to extrude the bottom. Now, the problem is I can't see the bottom, really. So instead of trying to move this around, do all that, all I'm going to do is go up here and click on. This is the display toolbar. If you don't see it, you go to View, Toolbars, Display. And I'm going to choose X-Ray. And X-Ray lets me look through things, which means it lets me get to the bottom of this. And hopefully I can do this. Actually pull it. And I'm just kind of clicking in here, and I'm pulling it down so it snaps to here. OK? And then maybe I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to start here. I'm going to pull it up so it comes through there. Then turn the x-ray back off. Otherwise, you'll probably go a little crazy. OK, and I'm just closing the group. I'm going to get back in here into the group. Right, so I've closed the group out. So this is still a group here, and this is a group here. So if I select both of those, actually, I'm going to select this group, and I'm going to make it unique as well. Oh, that's not a component. It's just a group right now. So I don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to select that, select this, 
right click and choose intersect faces with selection. Now what that does is that looks for this intersection and creates a line around that. So now when I come in here, well, let me do it to the other one first because I can't really delete that until I do. So that's one of those. Now I can do the same thing over here, but what I'm going to do is come in here, select this, and I want this back edge to be on that back edge. So I'm going to do move, control, snap that to there, and I've got that copy. And I can come back in here and select this one and just delete it out of there. So back out of here, select both groups, right click, intersect faces with selection. So now when I come into here, I should be able to select across here. Uh, what I need to do is explode this one, explode that one. And now by exploding those, again, groups and components separate geometry. So this is the case where in order to trim this out, I have to break it down. Now I could regroup it, but I'm not going to. By choosing explode, so I'll do it with this one, get in here, right click on this. Okay, get out of this group, select this. Okay, I already exploded that too. So now I can right drag across these and they've been deleted out of there. And I can come in here and get these little pieces and delete those as well. Now, if you see a side go, that means that's an edge you need. So you can't delete everything. Okay, and then if I wanted to come in here and make it look a little bit nicer, could always, oops, now you see what's happening when I did that? I know that's not right because it's not a thin line. So I need to get inside this group, choose a line tool. Okay, still not in, right? Right click, edit component, hit the move tool. And it's affecting this one over here since it's a component. And there we go. We've got that opening set up in there. And we've got a few more little lines. So there's some on the outside of this. Again, we can clean this up anytime. Okay, now because that took a little bit of time to do, I don't really want to repeat that. There's still a little line in there. There it is. Just dragging a rectangle around it, get rid of it. Okay, that looks good. So if I get back outside of that component, I can just delete this one, select this one, use the same rotate copy, find the midpoint. Bring that around to here and make that copy. Okay, so now I've got that Z button. Because I made this railing unique, I could edit that without affecting the other two on the other side and just create that opening there. And again, because it's a component, I missed this in the back, so I can still go in here. Oopsies. Don't want to delete too much or you'll lose pieces that you need, like that one. Okay. Anyway, I'm not going to clean the rest of that up, but you can go in there and clean that up. So I undid my other railing, but... Uh, Get rid of this one, select it, find the midpoint, can't find it there, find it over here.
reference the corner, control click, rotate, snap to that corner, and you've got it. All right, so that's the gazebo. Um, you can go back through that. Sorry, I had a couple spots in there where things weren't working quite right, but uh, you get the idea that it's gonna, it's gonna. We make the railings. I copied them around. I could have just copied two railings around. Could have started on this side, copied that one, made this one, and copied that one. I just copied all four, went and edited the first one to create the opening, and just kind of used the geometry that was there, and then did the intersect selection, faces with selection, in order to create the cuts through there. And I think as long as this stays inside component, you can break down or ungroup things inside of there, and that works perfectly fine. So hopefully that'll get you a little farther along and complete that last step for the railings on the gazebo.